Hello, this is Matthew Miller from the ZDNet Mobile Gadget here. Regular readers know that I'm an ebook fan, and I currently my favorite device is my Barnes and Noble Nook. Now, there's a new device that will be coming out very shortly. It's actually available for order um, through the website, or maybe it's pre-ordered through the website, for $149, and will be coming to Borders stores soon. This is the Kobo e-reader. Now, I took a look at this uh, when I met with the press content for a few minutes. I've now spent another few days with uh, my own review in it that I can uh, have for a couple weeks. And uh, I really do like this device. If you're looking for a dedicated ebook reader that doesn't necessarily have all the wireless capability in it, this is a really nice device. I do have uh, some pictures, but uh, let's take a look around the hardware that I've uh, shown kind of before. So here's the 6-inch e-ink screen. It's got Kobo Lego up top. Down at the bottom we have a directional pad. It's actually a rubber directional pad on a nice white background. Over here we've got four buttons. Home, menu, display, and back. Up on top we've got a SD card slot and the power button in blue. And what's really nice is the back of this thing. This is all soft touch, kind of a quilted pattern. It really feels nice in your hand. Um, very nice to hold. It's thin. It's light. It's just overall a nice piece of hardware. And on the bottom we do have a standard mini USB port for connecting to your computer. So you have to connect to your computer to get the books on here, but once you do with an SD card and some internal memory, you can hold thousands of books. It comes with actually 100 books preloaded, which and then I, I loaded up uh, one of my EPUB books. So let me take a look at some of the hardware buttons, right? So we got this home button. If I press that, well, I kind of see up in that top corner. When I pressed home, there's a, a light here. When you charge, the light will turn on. So there's home. This is the home view. It says books and documents and things I'm reading. If I tap on menu when I'm in home, it gives me options for I'm reading, books, sync, settings, uh, user guide, that kind of thing. Let me just tap on settings and show you these. Now one thing you might notice as we're walking through some of this is that the uh, the fonts and things appear really light. Uh, I don't know if you can even see that on the video. But uh, they are indeed light and I was worried because I was like, wow, is that really how I'm going to have to read the books with this light fonts? But don't worry. These are only available in these menus for some reason, but when we get into a book you'll see that the fonts are actually quite nice. So there's an overview. It gives you the device info, account info. Uh, date and time, and you can press on the center to activate that once you select it. Uh, oops, Bluetooth. If we tap on Bluetooth, this does have a Bluetooth radio. Currently, it connects to Blackberries only, and I'm not sure if they're adding more devices. But what you can do is you can pair it to your Blackberry. You can actually download books to your Blackberry device and then transfer them to the Kobo. So there's a way to get wireless capability, and uh, you know Blackberry is not a bad target to shoot for because they are such a large market. And then advanced is just reset to uh, factory defaults. So let me just tap back home here. That was the settings. And that was available on the menu. Right? Settings, sync, user guide. Sync, let me just check that. I'm not exactly sure. There we go, starting the Bluetooth. So forget about that because I am not going to sync. That's the, once you get the, it set up in settings, I guess that's the easy way to sync to your BlackBerry. I do not have a BlackBerry to sync to or try this out. So can't do that. Please take me home out of here. Okay, so we're back home. And then if I'm on the home screen, I tap display. It says there are no display options for that. Okay. So now let's get into a book. And speaking of books and content, this is the Kobo e-reader, and it does support all the Kobo EPUB books. However, it also supports Adobe Digital Editions, so you can write. Uh, books you can check out books from your local library, um, books that you purchase that are EPUB format from either the Sony Store or FictionWise or a bunch of other places, even the free ones from Gutenberg and stuff. As long as they're EPUB, right, they will work on this device. This book here, next by Michael Crichton, I bought uh, at Kobo, and I have it now on my Nook. I have it on my Sony Reader. I have it on the Kobo. So let me just go in there, and I used uh, Adobe Digital Editions to get it on here. Didn't have to repurchase it or anything. Just authorized this device for Adobe Digital Editions, and then loaded it up. So here's a typical page. So now that we're in a book, and as you can see, the fonts here, much, much better than what we saw on the settings and why they were so light and everything else. So I was worried. 
however not to be worried. But you can see even at the bottom, the uh, the titles and stuff, the fonts still are a bit light for uh, for some of those alternative texts that aren't part of the book. Now that we're in a book, if I press the menu, you can see that it will change a bit from before. We see now we have next chapter, table of contents, previous chapter, overview. You can browse your reading, what you're reading, your books, go to the display or help. Okay, now if I press left, that will close that. And if I tap on display button, this is where I have my uh, options for fonts. And we have smallest, small, medium, large, largest, and two types, serif and sans serif. So I currently have serif, which is a bit bolder, and I like that, at largest. Let's jump down to sans serif at largest and kind of show you that font. And then we'll go and I'll show you the smallest font. So you can kind of see the range of fonts. So there's, oh, that's not a bad font. I personally like the other one. So now let me jump up to smallest and show you how much text you can see on one single screen. And this is a very, as you can see, there it is. It is a very readable display, and um, I like the e-ink technology being used here. Let's jump to Serif and see what that looks like in the smallest format. Okay, so there's smallest. Now let's go to uh, the middle, the middle, this middle, uh, medium size, excuse me, and I'm going to do a little test here with you. So that's medium on the Kobo. Now let me jump over here to my nook I believe I have the same book Michael Crichton uh, neck or yeah next up on the same page yep yeah, okay so here we go so now we have a, whoops I'm tapping pages as I'm trying to do stuff here it's hard to hold both with uh, with one hand let me try to get to the same page so I can show you something here we're gonna do a, a little comparison so there we've go we've got uh, We've got the same pages. You can see that I have different sized fonts on both of them. They really nothing can beat the Nook as far as the e-ink display. It's fantastic. Um, I do have more choices in fonts. I've got a Helvetica new small on there, particularly right now, but it really looks good. And the Nook has more choices for that, but it's also a hundred dollars more than the Kobo e-reader. So now what I want to do is I want to do a page change comparison so you can see the speeds. So let me switch hands because I can use my left finger here on the nook and I'll use the directional pad. The only way to change or turn pages on the Kobo e-reader is by using the directional pad for all your navigation so forward or back with your pages. So I'm going to kind of offset both of them here and I'll try to push both next page at the same time. So are you ready? One, two, three. Okay, did you see that? I'll do a, I'll do a few of them in a row, um, and you can kind of see how the page uh, turn speeds are compared. You can see the Nook is beating the Kobo on page turn refreshes, just slightly, about a half a second. Now the Nook has gotten uh, a couple of firmware updates that have really improved that speed change of the e-reader and in all honestly in all honesty it really does not bother me at all um, I mean you see it's just press change I mean if you're reading a book on a very inexpensive e-reader I think that's acceptable you're, you're looking for the e-reading experience and the page turn experience as long as it's turning I mean that's still faster than a physical page turn so if you're beating a physical page turn you know, I don't think there's any problems with that, and uh, it's more than acceptable. So as you can see, really close, slightly slower on the Kobo. But overall, I have to say, I mean, so far I'm really pleased with this device. I may take this on my next vacation because, it, I mean, my Nook is fantastic, but this thing is so small, and I won't have wireless capability since I'll be out of the country anyway. So I might as well load up this with, uh, you know, 10 books or something like that and, uh, and read away. I mean, it looks perfect in sunlight. And uh, it's just a nice form factor. Feels fantastic in your hand. Now, that's the Kobo e-reader. Look for it in border stores. And that's another thing. I understand that it'll be coming with the uh, uh, Borders e-book store as well as the Kobo. Maybe it's the Borders branded by Kobo store with uh, magazines and newspapers coming soon as well. So very good alternative. 149. I think we're reaching down in the price that uh, more people are going to start buying these things. Thanks for watching.